There come these moments in life when we really have to ask ourselves, who am I? Why do I do what I do? Who shaped me? And why do I always end up exactly here? My name is Lyle, welcome to Lyle's Indie Corner. Let's take a ride with The Wreck. The Wreck was developed and published by The Pixel Hunt, and it's a visual novel choose-your-own-adventure game that was released on March 14th, 2023 for PC, Mac, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and Series X and S. In it we follow Junon, a young woman with a lot of baggage and through a series of flashbacks we learn more about her and what has led her to the accident that we find ourselves in over and over again. I want to preface my entire review with a content warning that the game gives you when you first start it up. A lot of mature themes are discussed here, so please take care of yourselves. When it comes to the graphics and animations, there is one word I would use above any other. Simple. Which does not mean bad. It means the character models aren't very detailed and neither are the environments. Which is a clever thing to do in my opinion when you are on a budget. And it gives the items that are more detailed even more of an emphasis and that lets you know that these are important. Another word to use here is stylized. Everything is rather flat and colorful. You can definitely tell that this is all done on purpose and that it's not incompetence on the developer's part. It fits the story they tell without straining the company's resources. Likewise, the animations are also rather simple. The intro sequence and the crash itself are the ones where the most movement is shown. For example, when characters talk, there isn't lip syncing, but they just occasionally open and close their mouths like they were puppets. And that also fits into the story. See, when you start a new game, the menu makes it look like you're writing a script for a movie or a TV show. So the visuals are made in a way that is more akin to storyboarding. It's a framing device that I really enjoyed and that gave more context to the graphics. When you get to Junon's memories and relive them, it's always a blocked scene where you see it all like you were on a camera crane getting different perspectives on the same moment. While I get that this style might not be for everyone, I really came to appreciate it after I was a little put off in the beginning. Fair warning though, the crashing sequence can induce motion sickness and you will see this one very often. So if you are prone to it, maybe test it out first. To be completely honest, I don't have much to say here. The sound design was fitting, nothing that was out of place. These are the sounds of our world, so be it a car crash, a hospital setting or following a lobster in the sea, it all sounds perfectly fine and like you would expect it to. But there isn't much of a soundscape created here because that's not really the point. Most of the time Junon or another character will be talking anyway. There aren't many instances of silence or scenes of just appreciating sounds. The car crash is the exception and kind of terrifying the first couple of times. They really got that one right. And the whooshing in the memory sequences is always fun. Whee! Sorry, I enjoy the simple things in life. I feel the same way about the music. Mostly it's ambience that really does fit the scene but nothing that I would listen to just by myself or that I have any desire for listening to again. The one exception to that rule is the song that plays during the intro. That was heckin' epic. I'm a sucker for a well-integrated needle drop. Quick shout out to my most precious editor, the Potato Witch. For something more hype, go check out their video on the games they are excited for in 2023. Now with this being a visual novel, you can imagine that there isn't much gameplay. And you would be absolutely right. This game is not trying to be something it's not, and I personally very much appreciate that. Which isn't to say that you don't get to do anything at all. All of the game is dialogue, but you can oftentimes choose what you want to say to people and what you want Junon to expand upon in her mind palace. Because that woman really likes to talk to herself. You see text floating around her and certain parts will be highlighted and you need to decide what topic you want to hear more of. This does give the wreck a bit of replay value too, because you're simply not able to catch every thought the first time around. There are also different endings to experience. 
The most involved gameplay parts are the memories. You can fast forward and rewind here, and you have to find certain words or short phrases to really delve into Junor's brain. Because the first time around, she will never quite tell you all that's happened. That could get a bit tedious at times, but I also liked it for what it was. There was always another layer to uncover, which is very human. We tend to take a while to really get to the bottom of our feelings and dissect why we did certain things the way we did them, or explain to ourselves why other people might have done the things they did. It also wasn't too finicky, which I very much appreciated. At the beginning I really took my time with every sequence, almost going frame by frame so as not to miss anything, but I really didn't need to. The game makes finding everything rather easy and I'm always a fan of games not wasting my time. I want to reiterate that this game deals with a lot of heavy topics, and it does so in a very mature way. One that I very much enjoyed, but that might hit a little too close to home for some people, so proceed with caution. When Juno is suddenly called to the hospital, she learns that her mother has suffered an aneurysm and that she will most likely not recover fully. Her emergency contact is Juno, who is also supposed to function as her mother's decision maker should she ever not be able to communicate her own will, something that Juno was not aware of and that she has no idea how to handle. Holy fucking shit. Because her relationship with her mother is very particular. It's clear early on that the relationship is strained and that Junon has never been able to please her mother with anything she has ever done. Pitting us against one another at a time like this, that's exactly what my mother would do. Even though Junon's her assistant, her mom is a pretty successful painter, they aren't close and it seems like Junon is criticized constantly for the choices she made in her life. And this is where the game really starts and we get a glimpse into Junor's life and how she ended up in this exact moment. The crash occurs every time Junor runs away from a difficult truth instead of trying to face it. This leads to flashbacks and more understanding of not only her relationship with her mother, but also other very important instances in her life. So slowly but surely, we get a clearer picture of who Junon is and what she has had to deal with. And a lot of it is not easy and would make most of us run away instead of facing some hard to overcome traumas. The wreck manages to tackle these issues with an honesty and maturity I have never seen in a game. And I'm not exaggerating, this feels like a story plucked out of someone's real life experience. Right down to the way Junon handles it all. Because there isn't over-dramatization. This is someone who knows exactly what has happened to them and who has made some steps to move on. But who also knows that some ghosts will just stay with you forever. And is in some cases unable to let go of her trauma. Junon is a flawed character who does flawed things, but has the willingness to learn and grow. Like a real goddamn human. This is mirrored in the way she talks about it all too. There is no Hollywood pathos here. There is grief and loss, but everything is tinged with this tiny bit of cynicism and the wisdom of having been on this earth for a couple of years. The wreck is made by a French developer and in my opinion you can tell. This all feels different from something that we would typically see from an American production. And it will not be for everyone, but I loved it. If this can emotionally connect to you, probably depends on a lot of things, but mostly on whether or not you like Junor as a character because she can come off as dismissive and unkind. In my opinion, she isn't. This is just the way she copes with her loss and grief. But I can see some people being put off by this. To me, that just feels real. I know that I certainly did not react the way Hollywood movies would make you believe trauma should be conveyed. But in the end, that's a very personal thing too. It also depends on whether or not you are okay with an accent. And I guess if you're here, then you are mostly okay with it. Because everyone is voiced by a French actor, as far as I can tell. To me that was very charming, but I know that native speakers can be... a bit stuck up about it? Overall, I really liked the wreck and it definitely left an impression on me as one of the most emotionally honest games out there. If you're in the mood for something like that and talk about trauma is not a little too much to handle right now, go give this one a try. I don't think you'll be disappointed. That's it for me today! If you're in the mood for something a little more lighthearted, why not check out my video of Deliver Us Mars? Don't forget everyone, let's be weird together!